a city on the move, and the street food is a major part of Vietnam's culture. It's very important for the local economy, poorer families can eat cheaply, produce markets thrive, and tourists love the experience. For Vietnamese, it's more than just a convenient way of eating. It's a lifestyle, which I feel is the envy of many Western societies. Pho is a dish that's loved and adored by all Vietnamese people. It's become part of our culture. It's something that we're all really passionate about. Now, pho takes time. It takes around 8 to 10 hours to simmer, stay up all night, no one else is awake. And this is Hien's family here have been lovely enough to share their family recipe with me now. cooking pho, it takes a lot of patience. It's probably one of my most loved cooked dish because there's so many ingredients and you need to look after it and you need to just really watch over it for hours and hours on end and the end result is just incredible. Now recipes change from region to region. The southern recipe, I would have had maybe around 12 or 15 different spices here but in Hanoi the pho recipe is very simple, it's very elegant as well and this is Mrs. Hien's secret recipe. So we started with some red shallots, char grilled, so they need to be blackened. It releases all its moisture, it's sweeter and we just peel it off. So she's got those going. I'm going to put some young ginger on there as well. Um, okay. in, the, in the south you would grill some um, garlic as well but she said in the north we don't want that strong pungent flavor we want clean flavors so leave the garlic out so just ginger and the asian red shallots so i'm going to grill that until it's black and while she's doing that i've got a pan and i'm going to dry roast my spices so here i've got some black pepper some star anise some cinnamon and some fennel and also some uh, black cardamom now when you're dry roasting anything remember dry pan not too high, really, really low heat. Once it heats up, put the spices in. Now, star anise here. Gorgeous little spice. Really strong, aromatic, liquid flavor. Yeah. Pom pom. Yeah. Okay, I got it all wrong. Don't dry roast it, just throw it on the grill. Let's do that. They like Okay. Bang. Doom, doom, just feel that. So she's just grill it quickly on the charcoal. Now, once you get that, that aroma, take it off straight away. That's right. Okay. Now I'm going to get this in to grill my black cardamom as well. And doom, doom, doom. Okay. Two's enough. While she's doing that, I can't really put my fennel seeds on this grill, so I'm going to dry roast it as I was going to do before. And just. Keep tossing it until it gets all the aroma out. Okay, now that fennel seed is ready. Put that back in my bowl. Throw in some cinnamon. Now the cinnamon is a bit thicker, so I'm just going to break it up a little bit. And then it needs a bit more pan time than the fennel seeds. Now my last ingredient to dry roast is just some black peppercorns. All right, my pepper's done. Looks like the, the ginger and the shallots are done. She peels all the, the blackened parts off. And we throw that into our pot. Now, I'm ready for everything to go in the pot now. Now, Mrs. Hien has peeled and sliced all of the ginger and the shallots ready to go. I've pounded all of my spices and tied it into a muslin cloth, just like that. Now. What I need to do is get my big pot of water. Now the water's come out of the well just down there, onto the, onto the burner. 
Now, I'm ready to put all my ingredients in, ready to boil. I'm going to start with my beef bones, throw those in there. And make sure you're starting with cold water, not hot water. You can also use oxtail if you like. And there's a few varieties of fur that use chicken as well, but I'll just use beef bones for this one. A kilo of beef brisket as well, which is the underbelly of the beef, the cow. Throw that in. A little ginger, red shallots. Throw that all in there. Crystallised rock sugar. Salt. Some fish sauce. A little, a little spice pouch and, and bring that to the boil. boil. I'm going to put the lid on, really low heat. I'm going to have a sleep and come back in eight hours. After two hours of simmering, the brisket is taken out and Mrs. Hin then skims off all the impurities, which is really important for a clear, clean broth. All the ingredients for the fowl dishes are prepared. The brisket is finely sliced and now everything is ready for the morning breakfast rush. Now don't expect a late breakfast. Mrs. Hin's dishes are all sold by 10 a.m. Beef bones are the base for the broth. Fowl can be served with tripe, tendons and also beef balls. There is, however, another popular version of fowl found throughout Vietnam served with chicken. Rice noodles are essential in all the dishes. They are simply blanched in hot water for just a couple of seconds. It's been eight hours, the broth is ready. I can smell the aroma through this whole street of Lee Kwok Su. Miss Hien has set up a stall here. I can't wait to get into it. Ah, come on, Yil. Well, the broth is so clear. First thing you do is try the broth. That's the most important part of the dish. Mm. This is comfort food for me. I can eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And there's Miss Hin's beef broth with rice noodles. I really enjoy walking down the streets of Hanoi and stopping these ladies who cart their bicycle down the road waiting for students or just local people to come out. Here she's selling fermented pork, a bit battered and deep fried. We've got lime gelato as well. And on her little basket, she's got green mango, which she serves with salt and chili. Now, one of these cups, you can have it anyway, 2,000 dongs, that's like 10 cents. What a treat. Wow. Mm. It's actually really, really good and quite refreshing. Delicious. It was time to leave the main city and check out some little cottage industries making wonderful ingredients. My first stop was Lang Vong, seven kilometers away. For centuries, they have been making this flat green rice. The young rice is first washed to remove the husk, then dried in these large concrete bowls and removed at precisely the right time, just before it burns. While the rice is still hot, it's put in this giant wooden mortar and pestle, pounded flat, which takes about 20 minutes. Now I was really surprised she still had all her fingers. One of my favourite dishes is flash fried prawns with pork belly paste. I used the rice as a coating and the result was fantastic. 
the flat rice gave the dish a real crispy, crunchy texture. Town, the moor was blown away by the activity. Trucks travelling at warp speed. No footpaths. It seemed everybody had a food stall of some kind. It's raw and full of life. To the locals, this is the equivalent to what we know as a shopping mall. It's hot, dusty, noisy, confusing, and I'm loving every second of it. Now this lovely lady is selling sugarcane, a very versatile plant. You can extract the juice from it and you can even just grab it like that and you can gnaw the juice out of it. Simple as this. Mmm. Oh. Very sweet. Don't swallow it. Discard it when you finish all the juice. It's delicious. Uh-huh. the road from a lovely lady selling sugarcane stick. I saw along here some ducks being roasted. Now it looks fantastic. Holes are burning. There's smoke. There's so much energy in the air that I kind of thought I really want to use preserved bean curd in a recipe. It's not really familiar up here with roasting duck but I absolutely adore it. Now I remember when growing up as a kid my parents coming from, from Vietnam they used to serve this with just rice and cucumber. Poor man's food, very peasant food, but you know what? Really, really tasty. Now, preserved bean curd is just tofu, it's dried, and then it's put in here and it's fermented with rice vinegar, rice wine, salt, and a bit of sugar and chili. Now, I'm going to do a really simple recipe. This is Dung here. My husband just freshly slaughtered this, gutted it, and filled it with lemongrass, ginger, and shallots. So he stuffed that and he kind of tied it all together. So, quick, quick, now look at that. It's probably around two and a half kilos, so fresh. I'm, I'm going to quickly make a very, very easy, simple marinade. In a large bowl, add sugar, powdered ginger, preserved bean curd, sesame oil, then mix it all up. Rub ginger all over the duck before marinating. This is a little trick to give the duck an aromatic smell. I'm going to grab the spoon and just rub the whole duck with this great taste. Salty, sweet, toasty. Now it's time for my hands. Rub it in there. Puppy, you better get out of the way, puppy. Puppy. <laughs> All right, now that's really, really nicely coated. I'm gonna pass it over to Miss Dung for roasting. Now this great little roaster here is actually run by a bike chain and the motor that goes in your windscreen wipers in your car. Genius! Now Mrs. Dung has put that on the coal there. It's gonna take 15 to 20 minutes to cook and then I'll ask her to chop it up. But right now you're gonna get a smoked Vietnamese guy. I'm gonna get it out of here. It's been cooking for 15, 20 minutes. Oh, perfect. So crisp. Traffic's gone by. You should see the juice in this. It's absolutely just oh, loving it. So the next actually my favourite part. Finally chop that up. Head in half, of course. The skin is so crisp. And then watch all the juices come flowing out. Look at that. Oh, love it. Now, now inside, inside we've got this, it's like, like a lime leaf. We've, we've got, got the lemongrass, the ginger, and, and the red shallots flavoring the whole duck. And, and then the skin with my preserved bean curd. I, I just can't, can't wait to get into this. Now, now believe it or not, she sells these ducks for 80,000 dong per duck. That's, that's only like $5. The last little bit here. Oh, so juicy, I'm getting splattered everywhere. But, but you know what? It's worth it. I've already been smoked the last hour anyway. 
beautiful. Come to that. That looks incredible. I'm gonna just garnish it with some spring onion, some chili. Oh my goodness. Now that just looks absolutely fantastic. My roast duck with preserved bean curd. But Nung Chao. Getting back to Hanoi in the evening was quite an event. The weather turned and driving conditions were slow. I made my mind up to venture out again in the morning and visit a family business making fantastic delicate rice paper. Mr. Nung's family are really excited that I'm interested to see how this rice paper is actually made. Now the rice grains are soaked in water for two to three hours and they're ground into this liquid batter that pours into this great filter here which creates this really fine delicate sheet of rice paper. It's steamed into this homemade machine fueled by coal and this hua feeds into these bamboo mats. As they're steamed they fall into the mats and they're dried in the sun for 15 to 20 minutes. Now the process of steaming the rice paper has been five hours. This rice paper that's been dried already, 15-20 minutes, there's around a thousand that comes in every day and they just sit here for hours on end peeling them off and slicing them. Now everything's done on the floor in Vietnam. We cook on the floor, we eat on the floor, and you know what, we even sleep on the floor. So this is the natural environment we're going to cook on. So today I'm going to do um, rice paper rolls, Hanoi style, which is called Nam Ran. Very different to the ones you find from the south or the centre. This rice paper here is in a rectangle shape, not a round one. Now you wouldn't use this rice paper to make your fresh rice paper rolls. They're the rounds when you use. These ones here are just for this dish crispy fried spring rolls. So I'll start it with my pork mince, throw that in, some crab as well, a bit of pepper, some sugar as well, balance that out with some fish sauce, some red shallots, some diced garlic. There's a lot of ingredients in this one, but all the flavours just creep on you slowly. Really delicate flavours. I've got glass noodles as well. Now I've soaked this glass noodle for 20 minutes in cold water and I've slice them into three or four centimetre lengths. Oh, but this root vegetable called jicama. Now it doesn't look that fantastic, but jicama is in the potato family and it's got great crunch to it, it's moist. And you know what? It tastes like a water chestnut combined with pear or apple. So give that a go. I've peeled that, I've juliened it quite finely. Now what you have to do is draw all the moisture out. If you don't do that, what happens is the moisture out of the jicama would break the skin of the rice paper when you fry it and it would just burst in oil. So I'm going to put some in there, in my muslin cloth or cheese cloth, and I'm just going to squeeze out all the juice. A lot of juice in there, see that? Now I hate comparing vegetables to a different vegetable. Jicama should really stand alone. Spelled J-I-C-A-M-A, jicama. Into my mixing bowl. Now that's really dry now and still crunchy and crispy. The last one which is woolly mushrooms. Now these have been rehydrated as well. Aren't they really really pretty? 20 minutes water, drain them and I'm going to finally slice it. Perfect. A bit more here that I'll throw in. 
and all you've got to do now is just mix it all well together. So once all the ingredients are combined together, it's ready to roll. So I'm going to grab some rice paper off these guys here. Now it might sound simple, but drying the rice paper, you really need to judge the sunlight. If there's not enough sun, it's around you know, 25 minutes, half an hour. If it's bright sun, 15 to 20 minutes. But if you get it all wrong, the rice paper will actually crack because of too much sunlight. Now in the south, these crisp parcels or spring rolls will be called jayo. But in the north, they're called Nemran, and in the north, they only use rice paper, not egg pastry or anything like that. And the beauty about Vietnam's rice paper is you don't need to dunk it into cold water or warm water. You just need to brush it. Now, I've used some tea here just to give it a nice colour and just to make it easier to roll. You don't want it too wet. You don't want it too dry either. So once that's done, I'm going to put some filly in here, my crab and pork and glass noodles. So just long sausage-shaped, fold the ends in. Ah, that one. <laughs> Mr. Nangis tell me how to do it. He's telling me to make sure it's really tight. And that's right, your rolls need to be really, really tight and firm, or else they'll just kind of bubble up and, and pop. So I'm going to use all my fingers here and roll that in tightly. That's looking good. Look here, they're bomb. That's right, yes. Okay, I'm going to put that aside. Now, when you're doing this recipe, the idea is to invite all your friends and your family and get them to roll it for you, right? Give them all the ingredients and you roll it all together. It's a communal dish. Don't do all the hard work yourself. So when I'm rolling, if you notice, I've had all my rolls all in uniform, the same size, okay? Make it consistently and make it nice, pretty. I'll just check my oil's hot enough. Wooden chopstick, there's only a few bubbles coming up, which is a good sign. I don't want it too hot. If it bubbles too much, then it's too high. I'm going to slide these little spring rolls in from the side of it. You don't want to do it on the hot oil popping back at you. There you go. And then another tip, just fry four at a time. If you fry them all together, the heat of the oil is going to drop and they're not going to be crispy. I'm going to fry these for around five minutes. And make sure that you keep rolling your rolls over and over again, just so they don't burn on each side. Okay, I'm going to take these ones out now. So I'm happy with that colour. Nice golden brown colour. Put that on some kitchen paper. Absorb all the oil. All right. Put that as a side. I'm going to pick some fresh herbs. Now I've got perilla leaf here. What else do I have? I've got Vietnamese balm. Nice, fresh... Fragrant herbs, really good for you. Got basil, coriander, slice that up finely. Into my bowl of vermicelli noodles. Pair of scissors. That, yeah, crispy spring rolls. Oh, that's hot. Some fried shallots on the top. Some fried peanuts. A bit of chili in your fish sauce. A bit of garlic and pour that onto your noodles and pastas. Beautiful. And there you have it. Wow. Mix that up. Vietnamese vermicelli noodles with Hanoian spring rolls. Bun Nemran. train to travel further north to Sapa. This beautiful village is only matched by the friendliness of the ethnic minority people. I mean, the character. I think he's had a few rice wines, I reckon. This whole village is enveloped in a magical mist, which makes for quite a surreal experience.